The Paldean region has a very deep lore and history to it, unlike many other regions of the Pokemon world. However, there are some questions that we still need to ask. And that main question is, how did the Paldean Empire come to rule? And why is this region broken up into different areas, such as Area 1, Area 2, or even Area 0? There are many questions that plague Paldea, especially about its warring history that's alluded to throughout the entire region itself with the broken down and destroyed watchtowers. All of these questions are things that I plan to try and answer the best I can in the upcoming video. So if this is your sort of thing, to find out how Paldea was possibly involved in multiple wars, sit back, relax, and find out the deep, dark, warring history of Paldea. For starters, we have to identify when the Paldean region came into power, and that would have been in the year 22 AAT, which if you don't know and you're new here for the first time, I've created acronyms for the Pokemon world, one being AAT, which stands for After Ancient Times, and the other being Ancient Times. Now, this is barely after Ancient Times in the year 22 AAT because it's 2,000 years prior to the events of Scarlet and Violet, which would have taken place in our modern-day time of the year 2022. Now, prior to the events of the Paldean Empire coming to be, I made another video regarding Paldea's involvement in the Kalos War. I hypothesized, it's my theory there, so if you want to go check out that history, that will definitely lead into this video, but to give a small summary, I believe back in the day, a thousand years before the Paldean Empire came to be, that the region of Paldea was overseen by AZ's younger brother, and during the war, Paldea had gone to war with Galar, which would be a subsidiary region of Kalos, and AZ refused to participate, so that's why his brother came and forced him to put the Floet into the war, and then eventually, because the Floet died, um, AZ fired the ultimate weapon on Unova, which wasn't Unova at the time, but it was owned by Galar, and then his brother's territory of Paldea, destroying both of them completely, which means that in the future, they would have to be rebuilt by either those nations that own them or by a whole new group of migrating people that wanted to establish their own region. So if we use my theory in mind, it makes sense then because when AZ fires the ultimate weapon, he disappears shortly after that and his brother would then run the Kalos Empire or now the Kalos region because Paldea had been destroyed by the ultimate weapon. Therefore, this would lead a vacuum or a hole open for Paldea to then be up for grabs for power. Like I just said, migrating people could easily come and establish their own nation there, especially if you know, the former power that owned it vacated it completely because it was struck by the ultimate weapon and everything was completely destroyed. So therefore, it's possible through this hypothesis here that that's exactly what happened and then someone came in and became King of Paldea and that is how the Paldean Empire came to be. However, that doesn't explain all the watchtowers of Paldea entirely or all the reasons why there's multiple quote-unquote areas in Paldea. See, unlike other regions, Paldea is broken up into not states, not towns, not cities. They exist, but also things called areas. And it's very weird because when usually when you discuss things like areas, you're discussing it from a scientific sense, from like biomes, like, you know, this is areas where we found this group of wildlife or from war zones where this is area one where we're, this happened X, Y, and Z at this time. And in my opinion, that's exactly what the areas are for. Sometimes it's alluded to scientific research and then other times it's discussing different battles or different factions that were owned in the Paldean Empire and then ones that were their own little mini countries. And because the Paldean region was broken up into other countries, quote unquote, with these areas and then the Paldean Empire itself, it's reasonable to believe that the wars were happening between them and not only that, but also to assume that the fairy tale about the Paldean King stealing treasures from other countries was actually from the other mini regions or countries within Paldea itself. See, for a while I thought 
they were making expeditions to like Kalos or Galar to steal stuff from them. But in reality, that wouldn't make sense because the king was spending all these treasures that he would steal and then put that financing back into excavating the crater, which means that he would to have to steal something very financial and then spend it in order to continue to excavate the crater very quickly. So he wouldn't want to spend expeditions to go steal stuff and then spend expeditions to excavate the crater. So more than likely what I'm going to allude to here is that the battles, the wars that took place on Paldea multiple times over was the fact that the king was not just stealing this stuff quietly. He was invading these other areas of Paldea and then taking their stuff after he either beat them or during the battle itself. So as mundane as it sounds, more than likely that's what the battles were over. This mundane, like, emperor stealing king going around to its neighboring regions and stealing from them and then, you know, pouring his riches back into his excavation of the crater. Now, to discuss the watchtowers, when you erect the watchtower, it's to obviously protect your land or to be able to receive signals from your ally. Those are the purposes of watchtowers, not just surveying. It's also to sometimes send signals back and forth. Now, the problem with the theory of the watchtowers are involved in multiple wars with the region itself is they're erected all around the outside, mostly of the region itself, as if to be watching from a distance by sea and a distance by land in a universal sense, not as a divided sense. So these watchtowers, while they are old, I think I can hypothesize here and say that perhaps they were erected once the king had, you know, pretty much unleashed the four legendaries that were wrecking the region. And more than likely, the other nations were afraid of these legendaries, so they erected watchtowers to be able to see them coming. I don't think it's a situation of where they were erected universally so they could see each other coming. I think it was to send messages and to also see the legendaries and pretty much, you know, stop out any chance of an invasion from an outside force or from these bad, mean beasts that were basically ravaging the land of Paldea thanks to this greedy king. Now, obviously, over time, the greed of this family that ran this Paldean Empire pretty much ran it into the ground. As we read, after a thousand years, the empire had crumbled for the most part, which means that now the other regions around the Paldean Empire that make up the entire facet of Paldea could relax or prepare to launch a counterattack. Now, something very interesting happens 195 years after the beginning of the fall of Paldean Empire. Notice that they said it's the beginning of the fall, not the actual fall. So this would allude that the Paldean Empire was still reigning in some form. It just wasn't as powerful as it was for those thousands of years because financially they have uprooted themselves. And probably because at this point, whatever family ran the Paldean Empire, they had plundered all the other regions of all their treasures possible. And then the whole cursed story of the, you know, evil legendaries getting out, that kind of put a dent in a lot of things as well, to the point where the riches of Paldea is now pretty much all plundered and gone because it all went either into expediting the crater or into probably fighting each other to maintain power over the region. So in my video, called the Dark History of Paldea, I talk about how then the academies being erected were the last ditch effort of the empire to maintain some form of secretive power over the region of Paldea. If you haven't seen that, the video can be found in the description box below. But it makes a lot of sense because if you think about it, an empire in decline would still need to maintain power overall in some way. And if you look at the history of the academy after that, the academy now began funding the expeditions into the crater after the Paldean Empire was dissolved. So this could allude that the remnants of the Paldean Empire, those that are loyal to it, somehow bleed into the facets of the academy, which means that when five years later, the Paldean region became the Paldean region and the Paldean Empire was no more, all the other countries aligned with the Paldean region, it was probably under the guise that everybody was going to be unified as one Paldea, but the empire secretly still found a way to maintain power through the academies. 
So ultimately, the crux of the story is the main battles were probably all fought over riches and war. The main Paladin Empire family was a bunch of plunderers of their own people. You know, their neighboring regions on Paldea. And, you know, things like Gimme Gold being in the Watchtowers kind of alludes to that, how people were trying to hide their treasures away from the king, and then eventually he would come and plunder them and take it away. And that's why now, you know, Paldea looks so empty. Like, while it's a very big and robust region, it's been ravaged so much by war that it's just a big region with very small towns and cities because it's just starting to really flourish after the past, you know, how many years of war. So those are my two cents on the Paldean region being plundered into war and how it came to be. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. As always, I greatly appreciate all the love and support you guys continue to show me on all of my videos. And I'm Drogain, and I'm out.